Hello, glad you could join me. Today I'm going to be making a pair of flat bit tongs. This is following on from our tongue making series. I want to try and make this a nice short video as flat bit tongs are sort of a bit more of a simplistic pair of tongs to make. So hopefully we can keep it nice and short. Um, so let's get straight into it. As usual, I've already forged out the first half of this pair of tongs. You can see it's a reasonably simple end to the tongue, a flat, flat bit tongue. They're a really nice and simple pair of tongs to make. I generally don't make them that often, but I'm going to make a pair today just because I figured I might as well do it. You know, a flat bit pair of tongs is generally the first pair of tongs that you would probably ever make. So I'm going to do a, a short tutorial video on how I've made this one. You'll see as well, I've done a cross hatch in the jaws, which is hopefully going to give them a bit more grip on whatever bar we stick in there to hold. So I've got a piece of 16 millimeter square bar heating up in the fire, and we're going to use that to forge out this rain. I've also got a mark on the anvil over here. It's an inch from the uh, in near side edge, which is going to be our first isolation point there. So come on, half on, half off. Isolate down this material for the jaw, then over the far edge, turn the 45, half on, half off, isolate it there. So we get the material coming in for the boss and then at the back of the boss. So we can then begin to forge out the reins. And I'm gonna rough it all in, keep it nice and thick. Don't go too far, don't move too much material too quickly as that can then be quite hard to retrieve the shape if you move it out the way too much. You want to keep it all nice and thick and then gradually work it down into this form. We're going to take a heat now to come back in and refine all of these areas. We've got a high heat, so we can refine this boss area. Bit of a lighter hammer as well, so I can be more accurate. We don't want any stray hammer blows here. There's something that I want to mention about the boss, which I don't think I have mentioned in any of these previous tongue making videos. And that is you want the boss here to be half the thickness of your jaw so that when they line up, your jaws sit parallel to each other. The outside edges of your jaws will be parallel if the bosses are half the thickness of the width of the jaw. I hope that makes sense. I've just got to work this one down a little bit more. It wants to be about 10 mil thick and it's about 12 mil thick at the moment. So I'll come on there and just work it down a little bit more until we get the correct thickness. I've come over to the smaller anvil so I can put this block in there and I'm going to forge a bit of a step on the end of our jaw which is going to help us pick things up off the floor a little bit easier or at least I find that it that it does help just to get that contact on when you're trying to pick stuff up off the floor it can be really annoying uh, trying to pick things up off the floor so I find it does help a little bit and it adds to the aestheticness of the pair of tongs uh, and we do it on this block so that we if we do ding the block this block is mild steel so it's not really going to do anything to our hammer whereas if we were on the anvil 
and we're trying to forge that, we might ding the anvil, which is either going to put a dint in the anvil or mess your hammer face up. So you don't really want to be doing either of those. So come on the anvil block and just forge a nice steep taper. I'll now take a chisel and mark on where I want my lines to go for the grip on the inside of the tongs. You'll notice that it is bending as we put that step on, but we can just bend it back afterwards. So I'll take another heat and cut these lines in just a little bit deeper, it doesn't have to be overly deep, uh, but just a bit more than they are at the moment. We've got the jaw all forged out and the rain's beginning to taper back from the boss. The next thing to do is to cut this off from the bar, draw out this material into a rein or a handle for the pair of tongs. But I'm going to do it off camera as I've shown this loads, as I said in the last video, I've done loads of uh, forging tongue reins out. Um, so go watch a different tongue making video if you want to see how I draw this out. Generally, I'll use a sledgehammer because there's two of us in the workshop at the moment. But if it's just you, you can come over the far edge of the anvil, half on, half off, and draw the material down aggr quite aggressively and pretty quickly over the far edge. Um, it won't take you too long if you just get at it and swing a, swing a hammer at it. Um, it's always a bit of fun, a bit of forging down tong reins because it is pretty hefty material. So plenty of hammering in it. Anyway. Let's cut this off, draw this out, I'll do it off camera, and then the next thing that you're going to see me do is rivet the pair of tongs together. So I'm using a bit of 8mm rod as a rivet. I've drilled 8.5mm holes, so we've got a bit of clearance. So get it set, tap through how much material we want, so we get an even amount on both sides. So we can use the ball peen in a circular motion to put a nice dome on our rivet heads. To set the jaws, I'm using this piece of 20 by 10. And then at this lower heat, we can refine the dome. Obviously, I need to cut this jaw back so that they're in line and neaten the reins up again. So cut this back so they're in line with each other. But we do that after riveting, so we make sure that they are going to be in line. Whereas if you do it before, you run the risk of them not lining up when you then rivet them together. That is basically it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and there you can see the finished pair of flat bit tongs. I've enjoyed making this pair. I don't often make pairs of flat bit tongs as I don't really use them that much. I find that they're not very good at holding bits of steel, really. They're, they're not very secure in, in their grip on bits of bar like round bar and square bar. They sort of waggle and sort of move about in the jaws when you're trying to, trying to forge on them. And so I don't really use flat bit tongs that much. The grip 
cut on the inside of the jaw does improve improve their grip so you can hold bar more securely but generally compared with say a, a pair of bolt jaw tongs or a pair of hollow bit tongs you can hold round bar and square bar much more securely in those when you're forging on it so that's sort of the pairs of tongs that i would generally pick up and use but for general use just when you're trying to pick something up out of the fire like a rivet or anything like that you know sort of something that you need that is hot that you need to pick up a pair a pair of flat bit tongs is really useful for that they're just a, a general use pair of tongs and a, a handy to have about the forge thank you for watching the video there's going to be one more tongue making video left to this series which is going to come out hopefully within the next four days in, in the next four days we can put a line under this tongue making series and that'll be it i hope that you've enjoyed all of these videos i definitely enjoyed making them and have learned a lot so far so the last video i think is going to be an interesting one a pair of side grab tongs with hopefully soft jaws so i'm going to rivet a bit of copper in there to try and create this soft jaw pair of tongs anyway thank you for watching the video i'll see you hopefully on the next and final tongue making video Thank you.